In this short video, I'm sharing some of my best tricks solving the most frequent panda problems. I'm not a professional mechanic and are not claiming to be an expert. However, I have rebuilt a Panda 8000 from mechanical to electrical and have been fighting my own Panda for the last six years. I will walk you through the seven biggest issues behind the four most frequent problems, some traditional and some untraditional ways to troubleshoot and solve these problems as well. Join me as I'm sailing around the world on B3, a Bavaria 55 cruiser. Let's just dive into this right away. There is several issues with a Panda making it sometimes difficult to start running. You probably already know this, but just to start somewhere, a diesel engine needs diesel, compression and air to start. And most of the times it's starvation or lack of diesel that's the main problem. And assuming you have changed the diesel filter and things should be okay, the following steps could help you. This original inline filter creates more problem than necessary and is often one of the troublemaker in several ways. I will come back to this and also share my solution. The first thing to check is if there is diesel coming to the engine. Sounds like a stupid question, but with a Fisher Panda, this is not a bad place to start. Diesel starvation is among the most frequent problem here. The reason is as simple as it's frustrating. The expensive yet extremely poor quality electric pump that's again digital controlled are involved in most of these cases. A common problem with this is that even though it's running, it could already be worn out and not sending diesel through the tubes. You have probably pushed the start button, hearing the fan starting up and it sounds like even the diesel pump is running. Yet the Panda will not start. This could be one of the four most common issues, or even a combination of them. Several times in the past I have had the Panda engineer on board. Two times they have claimed I need to replace the injectors and suggested a $1,500 to $2,000 cure on my Panda. Even though I'm not a mechanic nor an engineer, I found it unlikely that an engine back then, only having 500 hours, was in need of such big job. Turn out I was right and the solution is much cheaper. It's all about the diesel not reaching the engine. I said I will come back to the inline filter as this also is one of the problems often involved here. No matter how crazy it sounds, this is the first thing you should replace with two new filters. One better yet much cheaper and longer lasting with replacement filters. And right here you want to just place a dirt cheap glass filter without the filter inside. Only to have the reservoir but also easy visual if it gets diesel or not. Not only will this eliminate one of the most frequent problems, it makes the next problem easier to see and fix as well. Second after the useless inline filter that always create problems, the feeding pump is quite a troublemaker as well. Sometimes it's hard to understand this is the problem, especially in combination with fake error codes. It may make sound even without feeding diesel, but most of the time, at the end of its very short lifespan, it just stops. This leads to one of the most famous error messages. Unexpected stop. At least now you have a hint why. Lots of other funny reasons for why it stops has different names in this display. I will come back to this later. However, the diesel part that creates this stop is the same giving you problems to start it up. Only focusing on the diesel side of the problem, in 2 out of 3 times the inline filter are responsible. And in 1 out of 3 times it's the inline electric diesel pump to blame. If you don't hear the pump running, it's not so abnormal either. Shake it a bit and you will feel the vibration in it and it might work for another 30 minutes or so. It's definitely time to replace it. So if it don't start, the first thing to check is what I just walked you through. And here comes the value of the glass filter and also what could frustrate you if you have not done this modification. 
Normally you would open the hose clamp on top of the filter to see if it's coming any diesel when running the startup procedure. The problem is that when you stop it might flow back, leaving this filter more or less empty and you don't even see this. And then with an empty filter you put the hose back on again and of course it will not start because there is no diesel here. And even trying to start 8 to 10 times will not help you. Because the feeding pump is basically a very slow working pump and still you have no idea what the status is here. As the diesel pump is failing so much to have a visual overview like this will therefore save you lots of time and frustrations. And after changing filters or feeding pump, jump wiring the feeding pump will save you time as well. You only need to have a cable from the positive on your battery to the positive terminal on the pump. Then you will hear the fan starts and also the feeding pump sending diesel through the line. You save your battery and time because you are now bypassing the unnecessary preheat and start procedure. And with a glass filter you can see when it's time to try starting. And with some luck it will now start. Then it's just to cross fingers and toes and praying to your god that there will be no funny messages here before you are done using it. If it still doesn't start there is another thing to check. With filters changed and even feeding pump working there is no time to check the part I hate the most on this generator. The electric computer controlled servo that's controlled the throttle. This acts on behalf of the software together with the motherboard and sensors. Sometimes this can be stuck in wrong position. It's like trying to start an old engine while your stop handle still is out. This servo is like what you find on remote controlled toys and it controls the throttle via this link. You can try to start up again and see if it's moving the throttle in directions towards the servo. If it didn't move you can motivate it manually by move the servo to start position and I can almost guarantee you that your panda now will start. The next problem that's quite normal is after it starts it just dies. Unexpected stop is an error code any owner is familiar with and is also the most annoying and frequent message on a Fisher panda. Most cases for the sudden death after start is just the same as for your starting problem. The extremely poor quality in filter and feeding pump. I would say that in 8 out of 10 times an unexpected stop is to blame the feeding pump. In some rare occasions yet they do happen it's the servo responding on some imaginary problems. Anything from a faulty sensor to things you don't even have on your model. If you have problems with the eye control and startup you should also check this fuse right here. I take for granted that your switch is in correct position between shore power and generator etc. Because one of the things that seems to work pretty well with the panda is actually the inverter part. However I have experienced that it does not kick in and are not delivering any 220 power. After checking all the fuses and switches I more or less accidentally discovered the RPM was too low. On the 8000 it needs to be about 1700 RPMs to deliver power. So a tiny adjustment on the throttle solved this problem. One thing that has been a costly problem again to blame the poor quality of feeding pump and previous used filters is when the engine is starving and the RPM falls below inverter's limit and the power falls out. But when it suddenly speeds up again the spike coming through the 220 killed the motherboard on my Mac. So fine electronic is a bit scary to use as you can't trust the power this generator is serving you. Totally random error codes is a fascinating thing with the panda and especially when you get error codes on things you don't even have. It can be a frustrating task trying to find out why you get error codes and where they come from. I have been chasing panda ghosts for 6 years now and are tired of it. <laughs> sometimes it's software bugs, sometimes a faulty contact, sometimes it's well undefined. The problem however is it stops, sometimes for no valid reason and it's annoying. This message however is real and is due to a diesel starvation as I showed earlier. So how unexpected this is can be debated due to the extreme poor quality products involved. Please let me share my findings that might even give you an alternative if you are in really desperate need of electricity. 
From before, as I already have shown you, the throttle servo has been acting wrong. So I have been running some tests by disconnecting the link between the throttle and the servo. My Panda runs then for hours with absolutely zero problems. Connecting the link back again, it only runs for a few minutes and the throttle servo shuts the Panda down. The most interesting observation is that error codes don't appear before it has stopped. And it seems a bit random which codes I get. Let me give you another example. Before the engine is running, the display states its fault with the oil. Yet when it runs, it says the oil is okay. This is quite normal, as it needs to run to have a normal oil pressure. Because there is a bug in the software telling the servo to shut the engine down without rational reasons, it will find something to complain of after it's not running, like oil, faulty cylinder head, temperature, etc. With a well-maintained generator, none of these messages are true. So it's again a serious software problem giving us misleading information, making troubleshooting seriously difficult and expensive. You basically cannot trust the error codes you're getting that appears after a forced shutdown. And this one might as well be due to problems with the water pump. I will come back to this as this is another component creating tons of problems. A scary message, yet most likely it was just the first available message in the machine codes. Since there is no error codes on the display while running without the throttle servo, it's plausible to believe the imaginary error codes therefore only comes after the engine has been forced to stop. Meaning it's a serious software problem. Temperature or oil sensors will stop the generator from running, even without this link connected. If I could find a way to have this throttle servo exclusively handling the needed RPM, this generator would probably have been a good generator. At least if all the other hardware components is replaced with better quality products. Talking about quality, another source of serious problems and irritating high running cost is this water pump. Not only does it eat impellers like it's candies, it also has some serious issues starting leaking after not that many hours. Living inside this cocoon where it's surrounded with a sound insulation acting as a sponge, keeping the salt humidity to an absolutely max. The result is corrosion and rust faster than you can spell panda. So I highly recommend to ditch this capsule, making a better environment and better airflow for this machine. After rebuilding it and replacing basically every moving part from a brand new donor generator, I started a strict maintenance regime also with the water pump. At this point my Panda had only 500 hours. I had so much sunshine in the Caribbean that I was not really needing my generator. And also every time I tried to use my Panda it was failing on me. So I just left it for too long as it was not in use. The look after opening it for service was not so nice. So this led me to never use the capsule ever again. I now replace the water pump between 150 and 180 hours, because it has a leaking problem if used longer. This is a well known issue. The impellers are replaced between 1 and 2 times during this cycle, as it already has one included in the new pump. The reason is, after only 55 to 75 hours, the blade starts flying off the impeller. You can stretch the replacement interval longer. However, trust me in this, it will just give you more problems. And I strongly recommend to add a raw water loop with a strainer to collect the bits and pieces from impellers before it reached the heat exchanger. This is also one modification I did when reinstalling this machine. It has basically been more than enough problems with software issues. So I have tried to do my best to at least make sure everything is in top condition on the hardware side. The statements from the Panda technicians I have met is false. They have claimed the Panda is so complicated it can only be professional serviced by them. From my 6 years of experience, the problem is poor quality in the add-on products from Panda, such as the filter and feeding pump, and the water pump. The sound capsule needs to be removed and you need a solid fan bringing fresh air into the engine room. 
However, end of the day, the software is their biggest problem. If Fisher Panda had addressed these issues and quality problems, the Fisher Panda could have been a good generator. But for more than a decade, the 8000i has been on the market, so I guess they don't care much about the end user. I have now shared how I have eliminated 80% of the Panda problems. The last 20% of the problems that now alone stands for 100% of the real problems I cannot do much with. However, you now also got an insight in how it's possible to bypass even this. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. Also thank you for helping me growing this channel by subscribing. And remember to hit that notification bell not to miss my Southeast Asia adventure. A special thanks to all my amazing patrons supporting and helping me following my dreams. I don't know what I would done without you guys. Much love from me on Be Free.